Good morning and welcome to Inter Into the Terminal, episode two. Uh, today we're going to talk about file permissions. I'm one of your hosts, Eric the IT Guy, and joining me today is Mr. Scott McBrien. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. It's, it is it's just bright and early. All right, let's so dive on in. We're going to jump right into file permissions, right? Yes, sir. All right. What's the uh, what's the command to change file permissions? So there's there's three or four commands, and we're going to start out with the chmod command, which is uh, which is change. Uh, actually, what is what is mod? Now that I think of it, I'm not sure if I ever knew. <laughs> so it's a uh, change mode. Mode. There we go. Because you're changing the access mode for it. But before we get into that. Uh, how do we even see file permissions? Hmm, that's a great point. So my preference is to do an ls-l, or some systems will actually have an alias for ll, and that's basically listing all the file permissions in a long format. And so over on the left-hand side, you'll see d, uh, some d's, some r's, x, w's, and x's, um, and those those are broken up into three sets of file permissions. Um, so if we could maybe find just a, a regular file, I, I think that might make it yes. a little bit easier to to show and explain. Maybe something in Etsy. Um. Perfect. Okay, so we're we're going to oh, bypass the L. We'll, we'll... That works. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we've we've got basically three sets of permissions. There's the user permissions, there's the group permissions, and then there's other. So it's, uh, in this case, both uh, the, the user and the group are root. Uh, and we see that in, in about, the, about the third column, you see root root, uh, that's the user and group uh, respectively. And so if we're looking at the file permissions, you see Rs and that's read, you see W, that's write, and then there's X, which is execute. Um, execute allows you to look at the contents of a directory, or if we're looking at, say, a bash file, a bash script, or some kind of executable, uh, that X gives you execute permissions, which means you can actually run the the script in question. So, Scott, you want to talk about how how users, groups, and other kind of tie in with the read write execute? Sure. So as Eric mentioned, the uh, the ownerships are listed in the long listing output as well, right? The first person is the user owner of the file. The second person is the group owner of the file. And when we're looking at um, access controls in a file, when we're determining what permission someone should get, the first thing we do is we check to see if the person interacting with the file is the user owner of the file. If so, they're going to be covered under this first set of permissions. If they are not the user owner of the file, the next check is to see if they are the group owner of the file. And if so, they'd be covered under these permissions. And if they are neither the user owner nor a member of the group that is the group owner, that's when they're considered an other to the file and they get covered under this last set of permissions. Um, so uh, in this case, the Etsy issue file, the root user has read and write permission, no execute. The members of the root group have read permission, no write, no execute. And the others, which is everybody else in the system, would have read permission, no write, no execute. And if we maybe take a look at um, uh, an executable, like the ls command. Uh, so for this file, the root owner has read, write, and execute permissions. People who belong to the root group are read no write, execute. And the people who are others, anyone else on the system, would have read and execute. But again, they, they don't have write access to make changes to the content of this file. So how would I go about making changes to, to a file? So if I, was, if I was working in maybe a shared directory and I wanted to, to create a file and then set permissions, how would I go about using that? Well, you know what? Let's let's. That's a great question. Let's make a quick directory here. Um, slash data is always a good uh, or slash share. That'll work. Um, uh, 
Uh, so yesterday we had some users that are a member of the student group. Um, so we'll create this LD so we can show the contents of directory. Uh, so we created this directory for people who are a member of the student group to, to uh, add things to. And actually, before we do that, let's add a student group to the system. This is a new box. All right. Uh, so at this point, Eric, uh, people who belong to the student group, which is our target e list of users for working with contents of this directory, um, what are they considered to this directory? What set of so, permissions would they be covered under? So currently, if we if we look at our user and group, it's it's still set to root and root respectively. Uh, so currently, the anyone under the student group would actually fall under the other permissions. So they have the ability to read and execute within this directory. Right. Um, and so maybe actually before we. Uh, we start about talking about changing permissions. Maybe we should make it so that people who belong to the student group get covered under the group permissions on this directory. And so, so we can do, do that with, yeah, go ahead. To do that, we'd want to use the chgroup command, which is chgrp, and that's basically change group. So we can change group, and then if we do like a dash H, we can see all the options. Uh, I think there's only a couple, or I guess it's a, a dash dash help. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's really only about three options. So you use um, so you use uh, to group, then the name of the group, and the name of the file. Okay. Or in so this in this case, a directory. Name of the group, and the name of the file. Awesome. Now the student group uh, no longer falls under the other permissions. It falls under the group permissions, which is that second octet of permissions. So currently they have read and execute permissions on this directory. Uh, so that, that kind of limits what our students can do. In fact, they don't have any more permissions than anyone else on the box. So why don't we go ahead and uh, give them the same permissions that root has and uh, change their permissions to actually include write so that they can create and write files within that directory. All right, so we're going to use the change mode command that we mentioned earlier, chmod. And then uh, there are a couple different ways that you can specify how you want to change the mode of the file. We're going to start with uh, something called symbolic format. So we want to change the group field, uh, and we want to add the write permission in that field. And when we look at it now, there you go. So in the context of a directory, giving write permission means you can add or remove files in this directory. So anybody who belongs to the student group can put a file into this directory. Anybody who belongs to the student group can remove a file from this directory. Um, and then all other people have read and execute so they can go into the directory and then they can look at the listing of the directory, but they can't add or delete files from it. Awesome. So that, that was actually an introduction to file permissions and how to start to modify those permissions. So let's go ahead and transition now over into our deeper dive. So I'm, I'm really liking this new format, Scott. How about you? Yeah. I, we, we meandered a little bit, I think, in that first part, but uh, as, as we are wont to do, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, to be honest, to be honest, we kind of made up that whole uh, description of files and permissions. It didn't dawn, us, dawn on us to actually set the, uh, the context before we really dove into how to, how to start making changes. It's like, here, run these commands. Trust us. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Uh, one of the things that I think we can do to the student directory that we've already set up is maybe we want to make it more private um, and remove permissions for people who are not in the student group. I agree. Let's dive back in and uh, and take a look. All right. So we have the chmod command. And, uh, Eric, how would you recommend we 
uh, change the permissions to make it private for only the student user. So much like in the previous Tramod command where we did a G plus W, which is group plus write, you can actually do like basic arithmetic type uh, type formats on your permissions. You can set it as, as a whole or you can make specific changes. Um, so do we want to kind of jump in and, and talk about how to change permissions as a whole, in which case we'd start talking about octal? Um, well, I was going to do one more symbolic for others. Sure. And then I think we can create a file in here and, and talk about octal. Perfect. Uh, so to do that, we want to do uh, an O, or not O, um, actually it is another, jeez, uh, I, I need to start having caffeine earlier in the morning for these shows, I think. So if we do an O minus and then say read and execute. So if we do an O minus R and O minus X and or, uh, you can actually combine them to make them uh, a little bit more, a uh, little bit uh, less less typing, and then the name of the directory that we're we've been working on, so our data student directory, and then do an ls dash ld. We'll see that other no longer has any permissions to this directory. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of different formats that we could use for the description of the permissions. So, um, Eric, I think if you wanted to do it separately, it'd be something like this. Um, or if you want to manipulate several at the same time, like there's a whole bunch of ways that you can group that description together. Um, but that leads us to a great point. Like the more you want to make changes, the more complex that description of symbolic notation becomes. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you're doing a lot of changes, um, you want to move to a point of like what we were talking about earlier, hinting to earlier, which is octal. So let me make a quick uh, file here. Okay. Um, so maybe we want to make it so that this file has um, read write for the owner. Uh, let me make, let me choose group it real quick. Uh, we want to make it read write for the group that owns it, so people who belong to the student group, and we want no permissions for others. Um, so we could do that through symbolic with a more complex, you know, G plus W O minus R. But we can also do it using a numeric method called octal. And Eric, remind me, um, octal works off of values for the different permissions. What are the different permissions worth? So that's that's something that uh, can be con kind of confusing at first. So it's it's... It's again doing some basic mathematics almost on on files. So if you've got a a, a read permission, if you have an R, that uh, it, it adds up to a value of seven. Uh, so if you have a read value, that's that's worth four. If you have write, that's a two, and that's an if if you're talking about execute, that's a one. So let, let's let's break that down a little bit further. So uh, if if you have like read write execute. Uh, for user group other respectively, that's a four two one. Uh, you don't see that very often, but uh, one you will see a lot is uh, like a seven 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 five or something, and that's that's read write execute for the user and group. Um, and then um, I forgot my example uh, seven seven five. So you'd have read and execute. This is this would actually be something where we might want to get like a whiteboard or something for the show. <laughs> well, uh, so um, so let's just like take it a little bit smaller granule, right? So looking at our, let me clear my screen and we'll pull up this file that we're working with one more time. All right, so if you were to describe how many or how much permissions the root owner has on this file, how many points is that? So currently the user has RW, so that's a four and a two. So we're looking at a value of six for the root user. For group and other currently, we only have read uh, permissions. So that's a four for both those sections. So we have 644 okay. four currently on this uh, particular file. Okay. And if we wanted to go to uh, add write for the student group and have no permissions for others, how would you describe 
the points that user has, the points the group we want, and the points the uh, for others that we want. So if we're adding write permissions for the student group, keeping the user group the same, we'd want to have six for read write for user, and then we're adding write for the group. So we'd have read, which is four, and then uh, write, which is two. So that brings us to six as well. So we're looking at a six, six, and then removing all other permissions would be a zero. So you'd have a chmod six, six, zero, and then the name of the file. Okay. So when we're expressing these octal permission values, the first digit is the sum of points for the permissions for the user owner. And the second digit is the sum of points for the group owner's permissions. And the third digit is the sum of points for the others field of permissions. So this is what our target is. We want the users to have read write, that's six points. We want the group to have read write, which is six points. And others, we want to have no permissions, which is zero points. Okay, and when we look at it, after executing that change mode, that's exactly what we see. And so unlike uh, the symbolic method that we were showing earlier, where we were adding and subtracting permissions, where we had to know what the permissions were in order to add and subtract them to get to where we wanted to go, um, Octal is an explicit setting of permissions. So we add the permission point tally or point totals up for each user group or other, make our three digit value, and then it will assign those permissions. So if I wanted to take away all permissions from everyone on this file, so Eric, if I wanted no permissions for any person on this file, what would my user group and other values be? Uh, I'm sorry, run that <laughs> run that example by me again. I was I, was I want zero permissions available for any person, user group or other, on this file. Um, so we'd actually want a zero uh, in the user column. Okay. And, and then, what about group? Uh, and then group, we wanted to keep the same, correct? Uh, no permissions. No permissions. Okay, so we're looking at a, at a, a zero across the board. So chmod zero zero zero. All right. So we didn't say what we wanted to adjust. We just said. The, this is the permission set I want, and we execute it, and it's assigned. All right, so let's go back to 660, right? I didn't have to adjust based on the context of the permissions that we started with. This is the exact set that I want. So I don't know about you, Scott, but a lot of times I'm trying to remember all the different point values um, and uh, and basically doing math while I'm while I'm in sysadmin mode is sometimes a little bit confusing. So I've actually found uh, and I've, I bookmarked this link years ago, uh, but there's a permissions calculator.org, which really helps uh, when, when I'm trying to think through something. If I'm if I'm intent on using Octal. Uh, then I'll go to this Unix permissions uh, uh, site and it allows you to go through the user group and other uh, and basically click check boxes for uh, the permissions you want under the under the specific octal or this specific group that you're looking for and it'll give you the the absolute value um, but to be honest, I don't know about you, Scott, but most of the time when I'm doing sysadmin work, I'm usually just using the symbolic. In my mind, it's much easier to go, I want owner to be read, write, execute. So O plus RWX uh, and then a comma and just go through. It may be a little bit more typing, but I'm usually much quicker to kind of think of what exactly do I want instead of doing the, the conversion over to a point system. So I think that that's a differential between uh, maybe our eras of system administration. <laughs> so uh, I, I was from an early uh, early time in my career indoctrinated to using Octal. Um, <laughs> although I will say that over time, if it's like, oh, I just need to add permission for this thing, I'll do a symbolic because it's, you know, G plus R or something um, is easier than 
than recalculating the entire thing. Although I, it depends. Um, it's going to be the, the, the new slogan for the show. It depends. It depends. It, it, it definitely is an era based thing. Um, I, I, I do know working with some of the more senior uh, systems administrators and, and managers that I had, uh, a lot of them preferred to think in, in numerical values. Uh, so it's, it's just kind of a, when, when did you come up? What works for you? Uh, for me, using symbolic, even if the command's a little bit more convoluted, uh, works a little bit faster. But that's just how my mind's wired. Uh, and math is not my strong suit, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so we, we've talked about permissions, we've talked about groups, uh, we've talked about adding and removing, but there's one command that I want to cover that we haven't quite uh, talked about yet, and that's the chone command. That's the change ownership command. Um, so in, in fact, maybe, maybe we'll just keep this going as a theme through the show, but why don't we go ahead and add uh, Tony, uh, our, our example user from yesterday, let's add him back to this system and so let's let's say that data one is a uh, is a uh, uh, is some kind of a report or something that uh, that Tony is is working on, um, and he wants explicit permissions over his file. So if we do an ls, uh, actually there it is right above. Um, Oops. Typing is hard, especially on live stream. Data. Did I make it in the wrong place? I did, didn't I? <laughs> I didn't catch that, so I, I can't make fun of you for it. <laughs> okay. I think I've got it in the right place now. So let's... Uh... Man, it's... Tough morning. <laughs> right. All right. There we go. It wouldn't be fun without a uh, without a little bit of confusion that uh, that we've done to our own to our to ourselves. Okay, so we've we've got uh, we've got our data one txt file, and we want Tony to have explicit permissions to this. And so we we went ahead and very quickly created Tony, added him to the student group. So now Tony is a, a student again. Uh, so now we've got this data one directory, and if you notice, it's currently owned by root. And with the way that this is set up, that's probably an okay situation. But giving a user permission, uh, giving a user ownership over a file sometimes gives it a, uh, some extra uh, permissions. So in case we want Tony to be able to run a script, but uh, his classmates can only read that script, we this would be in a situation where we'd want Tony to be the explicit owner of that file. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the ch own command, or the I call it chown. Uh, so if you hear someone say uh, ch own or change ownership, that's this is the command that they're talking about. So we want to uh, we've got the chown command, and then the the final argument is the the file or directory that we want to use. Um, uh, so so just like the chgroup command, we want to have the command the uh, the entity that we're Act that we're sort of um, that we're sort of working with, and then the the destination that we're we're wanting to make the change to. So we want to chone Tony, and then the name of the file. And then if we do an ls shell again, we'll notice that Tony is the owner, student is uh, the group, and then other doesn't have any permissions to this file. So you have to be a student or Tony, or Tony is a student, but all not all students are Tony. <laughs> in order to work right. with this file. <laughs> so the other big thing about making the, the ownership change, so only the owner of a file may make changes to its permissions, right? So uh, if, Tony, if we wanted to allow Tony to make changes to the permissions uh, or add permissions to other people, um, Tony could only do that if he was the owner. So he would be covered under the group permissions as a student group member in before we changed it to be owned by him. Um, but he would not be able to manipulate the permissions on his own until he becomes the owner of that file. That's a great point. Um, I was going to expand on so that. So why, don't, why, I, to why don't I become Tony? <laughs> great idea. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm I'm now Tony, 
and here's my file. So why don't we make a... Um, actually, we that's one thing we haven't talked about. So as Tony, why don't we create uh, just kind of an empty shell script so we can uh, so we can differentiate between um, so we can differentiate between uh, say scripts and regular files. Something I shouldn't say scripts because that's that's very generic. But a um, <laughs> I'm not sure why. I mean, yesterday Eric was rad, and and today Eric's great. I, I'm just I'm, I'm concerned. Um, so we can actually add execute uh, permissions to this. So let's go ahead and do, uh, for those of you playing along at home, we'd want to do a U plus X if we're using symbolic. So we want to do a chmod U plus X and then data.txt. Oh, and then quick question. Do, uh -huh. do we want people in the student group to also be able to execute this file? Uh, just for the sake of dif differentiating, let's say no. Okay. So only Tony can execute this file. So a couple of things to point out, and this is this is something that's been really nice about the advance of terminal, is uh, of the terminal bash the bash shell. Uh, if you notice, before we changed the execute permissions on this file, it was uh, it was kind of a grayish white color. But now that it has execute permissions, it shows up as green. That means that we actually this this file can be executed. So if we look at our permissions, we notice that uh, Tony has read, write, and execute, um, and student has read, write, and then other still has no permissions whatsoever. <clears throat> so now if we do, say, a dot slash is one of the ways to, to execute a file, and then the name of our file, it'll actually run the script that, um, that, that Scott wrote. <clears throat> but if we were to, say, uh, create another user, and and log into uh, and, and and try and run that command. We'd actually get an error. <clears throat> I feel like these are NPCs in a D and D campaign. They're they're going to make recurring appearances in our in our uh, in our show now. So now as. Uh, so now we are the user Jill, and we're in the student uh, directory, and we can see. And in fact, before before we try and run it, Scott, why don't we uh, why don't we try and read that file as, as Jill? So you can do a cat on data one txt, and so we can see the contents of this script. But if we then try and do a dot slash, which is is one of the ways which you can actually execute a file, we're going to get an error. So we get a permission denied error, and that's that's what we were trying to set up with this particular uh, with this particular scenario. We can see the permissions, we can read the contents of the file, uh, but we can't actually execute the script. So only Tony can execute. Now, uh, Jill having write access to this file, what could she do, Eric? Since she has write uh, access, she can actually make a copy of this file, and then assign the uh, and then assign uh, execute permissions to her own file. At which point, so if if you're working on a group project or something, you'd you'd be able to uh, make a copy of the file, and then uh, you could make any changes to your own personal version of that file, and then execute it as yourself. So I disagree with you a little bit. Um, so in order to make a copy of a file you need to be able to look at its contents. So what permission do you need to look at its contents? A uh, student has read, read access. Right. So because Jill has read access to the file, she can make a copy. Mm -hmm. Now, because she has write access to the directory, that means she can add another file in this directory. So the read on the file gives her the ability to look at the contents and make a duplicate of it. The write on the... Uh, data student directory allows her to store her copy in the same directory. Um, but even without, with read access, she could maybe duplicate the contents and put it in her home or something like that. Right on the file would mean that she could do something like this.
I've I've never done that to to anyone's file. So, uh, while she can't can't execute the file because she has write permission, she can make changes to it. That's that's so, a great point. It yeah, and that goes back to like knowing what the permissions do on the file will help you determine what you should grant and what you shouldn't grant to someone. So if uh, Tony was concerned about people making edits, like he wants them to be able to see the contents, but he, they shouldn't be able to make edits, he needs to remove that right permission for um, people in the student group. So I hope this I hope this was helpful. Uh, we ended up doing a lot more Linuxy type uh, background than we'd originally anticipated, but I I've, I feel like this the the change was very valuable. Um, in fact, there was about six different commands that we'd had on our on our show notes for today to cover, but we are actually going to hang on to those and we'll do kind of an advanced file permissions episode in the future. So that's the fun of joining us live because you never know what's going to happen or what tangents we'll go off of. But I, I feel like uh, this was a much better uh, introductory episode to file permissions than we originally intended. So stay tuned for advanced file permissions. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, tomorrow... Uh, so, um, so actually tomorrow we're going to be talking about installing software. Um, we're not going to... We'll, we'll make sure to have all the repositories and everything set up. Uh, so we can just do uh, installation of software a couple of different ways. Uh, but join us next week because one thing we haven't teased on this show yet is that we're going to do kind of a jumpstart week. While a lot of our content is Linux specific or is Linux generic, I guess we should say, uh, in that it would work across multiple distributions, across different families of Linux uh, and even Unix and uh, most of pretty much all of this would work on Mac OS as well. Um, next week, we're going to do a play-by-play, step-by-step through how do you get started with Red Hat Enterprise Linux specifically. So that, that goes to how do you get the ISOs? How do you spin up an image? How do you get uh, a subscription? We'll talk about the uh, developer uh, for uh, the individual developer uh, subscription, how to get a hold of that. Uh, so join us next week for that. Tomorrow we'll talk about uh, kind of a generic approach to installing software. And then Scott, you want to tell folks uh, about our... Uh, about our uh, marathon that we just kicked off? Sure. So uh, to, to help kick off our Into the Terminal series, uh, we are doing a daily Into the Terminal for the next four weeks. So um, every day, and then also we will be doing it in the evenings as well. Um, so if you are geo-disparate uh, and not in, in the... Uh, Western hemisphere of, of the world, but in the Eastern hemisphere, we will do one on your side of the earth as well. Uh, or if you're interested in just doing this after work or in the evenings, uh, if you're in the Western hemisphere, then we, we will be doing one for you in the evenings. All right. With that being said, here, uh, thank you all for joining us live or, or after the fact. Please put your questions uh, in the comment section. Or if you, uh, if you have uh, ideas for content, put those in there as well. Scott and I check uh, the comments periodically throughout the day. Uh, we want this to be a tool for all of you. So if there's something that you're interested in that would help drive the content of this, uh, of this show, this is just episode two. And as you can see, we're kind of making changes on the fly even. Um, so you know, please comment. Uh, and and if, you, if you know someone who's interested in technology, Linux is, is definitely a very, very important part of technology, both now and going forward. Um, so share this with, uh, with someone who's interested in doing the technology thing. Um, meantime, uh, hang out with us. Um, <laughs> uh, be sure to hang out with us this evening for a uh, re-airing of, of, uh, of this content. Join us tomorrow for installing software, as well as our other live show, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents. Uh, other than that, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you tomorrow.